This is Ferris Khan from Michigan Football at the Voice of College Football. Today, we are coming to you from just outside of Zion National Park, where the peak temperature today was 105 degrees. Hopefully, there will be no games that Michigan plays in this year that will be that hot. Hoping to go to the National Park when the sun is setting a little bit and it cools down into the 90s. But for now, my mind is occupied with the idea of 2024 Michigan core metrics for offense. We're going to go into details on what I think the metrics that matter are for Michigan from an offensive perspective. Coming up next. All right, so let's start with a metric. I, I, there's 13 me metrics that I evaluated. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the metric. I'm going to kind of rate it as high, medium, or low importance. I'm going to give you the 2023 Michigan number. And then I'm going to give you an optimistic, realistic, and pessimistic um, thought on what I think kind of the range of what Michigan could be in 2024 versus 2023. If we look at the offense versus the defense, there's a chance the defense could be on par 2024 versus 2023. However, most people think there will be a regression uh, for Michigan between uh, on the offensive side between 2023 and 2024. That's why it's really kind of important to kind of get into the numbers and try to figure out wh what are the metrics that matter and what I what do I think are kind of the important metrics that we should really take a look at in detail. All right, so the first one, 13 of these, the first one is the percentage of running plays. All right, in 2023, Michigan had... 61% running plays. Ohio State was, I think, 51%. Alabama coming out of the high-flying SEC, undefeated in that conference, had a uh, percentage of running plays that was higher than Michigan, 62% with Jalen Milrow. Now, optimistically, what we're looking at is 61%, just kind of matching what we had. Realistic maybe 65% running plays is what I would say. And then pessimistically, um, you know, something a little bit higher, maybe 68%, so somewhere in there. Okay. So that's where we can sort of start uh, our metrics. Now, the next metric I'm going to um, pull up is interceptions per game. Okay. Now, this was a very, very low number. J.J. McCarthy gave up three interceptions in one game against Bowling Green. The entire rest of the season, 14 other games, he only gave up two interceptions for all of those games. That is really unrealistic. Even the most optimistic scenario, we're not going to get there. Optimistically, maybe there'll be about a half interception per game that we give up. Realistically, maybe three quarters. Pessimistically, one interception per game. This is super important. Um, we may not rack up that many yards. We may not rack up that many passing yards, but if we can keep the interceptions in check, we should be in most games with, with our defense. All right. The next metric that we can look at is fumbles lost per game. So this is on the running side of the ball. We're going to be run heavy 61% or maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, if we are, then a uh, higher probability of um, people, you know, the defensive players trying to strip the ball or something going wrong with respect to fumbles. Uh, Michigan, realistically, 0.2 um, fumbles lost per game, matching what they did last year. Optimistically, something a little bit less, 0.15. Pessimistically, 0.3. We'll see what happens. Um, heavy running game, got to keep the interceptions in check, got to keep the fumbles in check as well, fumbles lost in check. The next metric we can look at is offensive penalties. And remarkably, in 2023, Michigan only had three offensive penalties per game. 
that's pretty optimistic. We're probably going to have four or five penalties per game uh, on the Michigan end. So let's see what happens. But um, play smart football. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, have a set number of plays. Don't confuse ourselves. Confuse the opposition. Get them to have penalties, not us. Remember, we're not really aiming for massive, huge stats. We're ma- we're aiming for the defense to keep us in games and then for the offense to be opportunistic and be able to keep errors down, keep interceptions down, keep penalties down. The other piece of offense, uh, offense is the penalty yards. So, you know, we don't want that many 15 yard penalties. We, you know, maybe there's a five yard penalty, that sort of thing. So what we're looking at um, for 2023 is 27 and a half yards of penalties per game. That again is optimistic to, for us to match that 27 and a half. Probably 35 is more realistic, pessimistically 45 offensive penalty yards. Um, reduce those yards. Uh, you know, a lot of this is, is difficult to, to know for sure. A lot of times uh, certain um, penalties can be called either way, you know, things like uh, holding, for example, uh, uh, or overlooked. Uh, in one case, it's identical play, then it's called. You know, I get that, but um, keep these numbers in mind as we're playing games. Are we keeping these uh, uh, penalties in check, um, realizing maybe the officiating crew is uh, blowing the whistle too much, so maybe not every game is going to be like this, but in general, uh, aim. F- let's aim for three offensive penalties per game and keep it under 30 total penalized Yards hard to do, but we did it last year. Next metric so, all of the ones I described up till now these five metrics percentage of running plays, interceptions per games, fumbles lost, offensive penalties, offensive penalty yards I consider these high importance. If we're doing well, if we're on the optimistic side, I like our chances to basically lose only two games and get to the playoffs. Uh, even and if we did nothing else, if you told me we're matching our numbers from 2023 on these metrics, I would say that we are going to make it to the playoffs with two losses or less. All right. Medium metrics. Okay. Yards per pass attempt. Um, so this is an important metric in general, but we are not going to necessarily be a passing team per se. Uh, in 2023, we were nine yards per pass attempt. Realistically, we're going to drop off a little bit from that, maybe eight and a half yards. J.J. McCarthy was the best Michigan quarterback probably of all time. Um, so optimistically, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, not having him uh, eight and a half yards per attempt. Realistically, eight. Pessimistically, seven and a half. All right, now let's look at passer efficiency rating. So I get this metric from sports reference. If you're interested in this, this is a um, an overall rating of a quarterback or quarterbacks uh, in this case, mostly J.J. McCarthy, but but other quarterbacks as well. Um, J, if you look at the metrics, it includes uh, interceptions, includes passing yards, includes touchdowns. So um, I, I look at sports res- reference as the gold standard in terms of metrics for college football, look at their formula and you see um, Michigan in 2023 had a 167.4. That's mostly JJ McCarthy. Optimistically, we're not going to get to to that number. We'll, we'll be maybe 160, realistically 155, pessimistically 145. Now these numbers might actually have a lower denominator, meaning fewer pass attempts, but the attempts that we have more completions, you know, that sort of thing. So um, you could have a relatively high rating with few actual pass attempts. So realistically, not getting to that 167 number, but getting 145, 150, 155, it's realistic that that Michigan could get there. All right. 
The next metric is passing yards. In 2023, Michigan had 214 passing yards per game. Optimistically, we're not going to reach that, but but can we get to 200? Can we get to 200 yards? I'm not sure about that. Maybe realistically more like 180 yards. Pessimistically, 160. Now, a lot of times people look at counting stats and they think that's important. Now, I look at this as a medium important stat. If our running game is working, we could have 150 yards um, and I'd be happy. Uh, so, so it really kind of depends on the situation. If we are behind, we need to pass. Okay, fine, let's pass. But if we're not behind, we're trying to control the game. We're trying to do um, boa constrictor football where we're trying to control the game in the second half of the third quarter into the fourth quarter then we don't necessarily need that many passing yards. The next metric is completion percentage. And you may have heard um, John, TJ, and myself, we sort of joke around that uh, Alex Orgy, you know, I believe that Alex Orgy can complete a forward pass. And in fact, I think he can get to 62%. If he can get to 62%, we should be fine. Now, in reality, there are other metrics that are more important than strictly completion percentage. I put this as a medium importance metric. But if we look at 62% um, compared to JJ, JJ was 10 points higher at 72%. So we are expecting a drop-off. Optimistically, even 65% completion. Realistically, 62%. Pessimistically, in the 50s. Some people point out that Alex Orgy um, was in the 50s in terms of his completion percentage in high school. I'm not too worried about that. What I want him to do is distribute the ball, throw the ball occasionally long, complete a few, um, does not necessarily have to be consistently every single game, but just have that threat and then get those 10 to 15 yard passes that also have 10 to 15 yards after catch, yak after catch, yards after catch. So that's what I'd be looking for there in terms of com completion percentage and kind of matching Alex Orgy with the team, molding the idea. And I am assuming at this point that, that Alex Orgy is the quarterback. Um, getting the ball to tight ends, getting the ball in, in terms of quick outs to uh, receivers, Maybe even Donovan Edwards once in a while throwing a ball. Let's see what happens. All right. Now, rushing yards. In 2023, Michigan had 169 rushing yards per game. Optimistically, we're going to run a little bit more. Maybe we can push that up another five or six yards. Let's say 175. Realistically, we match the numbers from last year. Pessimistically, 150. Now, why am I saying the numbers might actually be at the same level as last year or higher where Blake Corum was leaving. Well, yes, Donovan Edwards is coming in. Um, he is the heir apparent, and I think he can match the numbers in terms of um, the number of raw yards, but it may be a little bit different. It may not be three, four, six, eight, you know, that sort of thing. It might be zero, one, two, and then 35 or 60 or whatever. So uh, um, for those of you who know Barry, Barry Sanders and kind of how he used to play, maybe it would be a little bit more like that. We do have Mullings and we also have Alex Orgy. So I really think in most situations outside of the big three games being Ohio State, Oregon, and um, Texas out of, outside of those big three games, I see Alex Orgy uh, going for it on fourth and three, everyone knowing that Michigan's going to run. And uh, I see Alex Orgy keeping the ball many times and being able to get those three yards. Now, I know the final play of the Michigan-Alabama uh, game was was like that. It was a fourth and three, or uh, three-ish. And um, Milrow was not able to get the first down. So I, I get it. If they're against an elite defense in a similar way with Alex Orgy, if they're against an elite defense, you got to pass the ball sometimes on fourth and three. Outside of those three big games, however, I believe that um, Alex Orgy, fourth and three, they'll go for it. 
even if they're on the, in Michigan territory, they'll still go for it. And they're going to go ahead and pick up that uh, first down with, with Alex or G just running. Okay. So then the next metric is now I consider this last set of metrics to be lower importance. So rushing touchdowns per game. I don't really care how many points Michigan gets as long as it's, if they win 13, 10, that's fine. If they win 27, 20, that's fine. Just win. Um, so how many rushing touchdowns they get is not really that important to me relative to did the defense do their job and did uh, Michigan score just enough points to win? 2.7 uh, is what they did last year. Optimistically, maybe they actually up that a little bit, get it up to three, realistically match last year's number and pessimistically a little bit lower than last year's number. Passing touchdowns per game, same rule applies as rushing touchdowns per game. Doesn't really matter to me how Michigan wins. Uh, uh, as long as if the defense is, is uh, keeping them in check, they're getting some uh, field goals. That's fine by me. If, if they're winning a game 9-6, uh, let's say against Oregon or something, I would be thrilled. I have, and they score zero touchdowns, uh, passing or rushing. In 2023, Michigan got 1.6 passing touchdowns per game. Optimistically, we'll get close to that, maybe 1.5. Realistically, 1.2. Pessimistically, just one. All right. Time of possession. You may be surprised to know that Michigan really didn't control the time of possession very well last year. I mean, they they were slightly positive at 31 out of 60 minutes, um, but it wasn't something you know you you would think smash and you would think you know heavy run game. Michigan must have controlled time of possession. Well, that's not necessarily the case when you look at only 31 minutes uh, out of a 60 minute game. Uh, not super important to me uh, what the time of possession now. I will say that time of possession in the fourth quarter, if they, if they need it, if they need three or four first downs, they're winning the game by three points, let's say. That's is, this is exactly what happened with Ohio State. They kept the ball for seven minutes, and then they kicked a field goal. And Ohio State did get one long pass. They, didn't, they weren't able to get another long pass, and then they lost the game. They kind of ran out of time in that game. I expect Michigan to do something very similar to that uh, this year. And so that means time of possession doesn't really matter all that much. Okay, so those are the metrics that I have. Uh, there are, let me just make sure, there are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 metrics for your review. Go ahead and take a screenshot if you'd like. I'm going to revisit this as the season goes along. I may change the importance of a stat if I think it really impacted the result of uh, a game. Uh, I'd love for you to just take a screenshot of this and you tell me which metrics matter to you. All right. Hang on a second. Please remember to smash not just the numbers, but the like button. So if you could smash the like button, our channel is growing by leaps and bounds over the last 30 to 45 days. We are on our way to catching up to the Ohio State channel at the Voice of College Football. Would love to do that as soon as possible. We have so many things planned in preparation for. Uh, the season to start. Uh, please like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment if you have something specific you would like me to look at in terms of metrics review of Michigan football. Thank you. Go Blue.